Hey, hey. Hey, hey, everybody. Yeah, yep, yep. It's me, your boy. Hey, who? Pastor Full Impact Ministries. What's happening, everybody? How is everyone doing today, this evening? I pray all is well for you. Listen, um, I want you all to do three things for me. I want you all to begin to go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Pastor Eric Hood, E-R-Y-K. Go to my YouTube channel and, sub and, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I need a thousand subscribers so I can begin to go on there live as well. I can't do it without you. I need you to I need you to go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. Pastor Eric Hood, E-R-Y-K, Hood, H-O-O-D. And hit the subscribe button. And the second thing, I need you to begin to follow my Facebook ministry page, Full Impact Ministries. Go to Full Impact Ministries and hit the follow button. And also hit the notification bell. To where you are notified every time I come on. Hey, sure. Bless you, darling. And the third thing I need for you to do. Well, you need to do this here. I am into helping people with their credit. Building their credit. Rebuilding their credit. Restoring their credit. To whereas you can begin to have a new life of of financial open doors that can take you and your family to a whole nother level of living. If you're interested in getting your credit restored, rebuilt, call me at 404-707-1804 or you can go to my website, thecreditgoon.com, thecreditgoon.com, and we and I will begin to show you some things as far as what we're able to do as far as your credit. To get your credit back in line to where your life can begin to be open for all type of financial favors and blessings. So those are the three things that I need you to do. I need you to, to go and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Pastor Eric Hood, E-R-Y-K. And I need you to follow my Facebook ministry page, Full Impact Ministries. Go hit the follow button and the notification bell. And, and if you want to get your credit restored and rebuild, DM me, call me, and check out my website, thecreditgoon.com. Okay, let's get it in. Today I want to speak with you about Stop Dishonoring Wisdom. Stop dishonoring wisdom. You know, this here, this message is coming down all of our streets. Every last one of us on this planet. All of us. And, and, and some of us have grown in this area and still growing daily. Some of us have just kicked it to the curb. Don't care at all. Don't care how life is really going. Those are the people that I'm mainly speaking to because that ignorance is what is hindering people who are closely connected to you. Some of you all are parents and you all are just dishonoring wisdom like never before. And as a result, your children are paying the ultimate price. Some of you all are married and, and either one or the other spouse or both spouses are just dishonoring wisdom altogether and as a result, your marriage is collapsing. Many of us do it in our health, in our relationships, everything. But God is gracious. God is merciful. God is long-suffering. And he is constantly pouring out wisdom to us. And I want to give you the definition of wisdom right here. Wisdom is the ability to discern inner qualities and relationships. Wisdom 
is the ability to discern inequalities and relationships. So this means that because wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, they are all linked together. They are all linked together. They work coincide each other. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, they work right inside each other. And you're going to see it in this message. So wisdom is the ability to discern inner qualities and relationships. So this wisdom that you are dishonoring is the wisdom that has you the qualities to discern the inner things, the inner to actually be able to discern the inner qualities that's in you, to discern the inner qualities that's in other people, to see if whether this is a fit relationship for you or not. And I'm not just talking about marriage with boyfriend and girlfriend, husband and wife. No, I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about in relationship dealings with people. This wisdom, this wisdom, this wisdom is what we call discernment. And it gives you the ability to discern what's really in somebody. And whether they hard posture is really towards you or, or not. Because some people will pretend to help you, but they really are out to set you up for failure. Listen to what the Bible speaks about over here, over in Proverbs. Proverbs is the book of wisdom. And it is written by Solomon, who uh, God said is the wisest and richest man on earth, and that there'll never be another one wiser or richer than him. So far, he's been telling the butt naked truth on that. Now, listen to this here. Over in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20, and I'm going to be reading this here from the Amplified, and I'm going to key in on some key words. Wisdom cries aloud in the street, she raises her voice in the markets. Wisdom is always talking to you. Wisdom is always crying out to everybody. Wisdom is crying loud in your soul, in your heart, in your mindset. Wisdom is, wisdom is telling you what's real from Memorex. But many of us function so much in our emotions, function so much in our emotions to where we done gave a deaf ear to wisdom. And as a result... See, we don't understand that life, life has life, life has rules, life has laws that it has to go by. Watch this here. And by God being faithful to the rule of life that he created, there comes a time to where God has to take his hand back and say, okay, life, go ahead, do what you got to do. And and by us being so dishonorable to wisdom. Life has to do what it has to do. And life is going to put hickeys on. We all have experienced some hickeys on our head for not honoring wisdom when it's given to us. We've all had it to where, to where we about to go out with some friends and wisdom say, don't go. Sit down and watch this movie, don't go. But no, we want to dishonor wisdom. We end up shot. Many end up killed. Many end up locked, locked up. Many women end up pregnant, pregnant by some guys who don't care nothing about them. Many women end up raped. All kind of stuff that happen because we dishonored wisdom. Many times we have dishonored wisdom, and we have lived with some stuff that took years to get off of us. Verse 21, she cries at the head of the noisy intersections in the chief gathering places. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. So she's always speaking even in all the noise and busyness of the world, all the noise and busyness. She's telling us, go this way, go this route. And have you noticed that wisdom is categorized as a female gender? Wisdom is categorized as a female gender because this is why the scripture speaks about over in James. It says, let, let um, patience have a perfect work because wisdom has to do with patience. Wisdom has to do with contemplating the thing. Wisdom has to do with saying, you know what? 
Let me mellow on this one here for a minute. Let me see if this is worth it. Let me think about this for a minute. Wisdom will have us to do that because wisdom is like an incubator beta that's in a woman. You know how when a woman gets pregnant and she holds the baby for nine months, it is because the baby has to be nourished and protected. The baby is being protected and everything. All those nine are being fed and everything. The baby has no needs and no wants and nothing because everything is being being taken care of in that shield, in that shield of water. Everything, everything is being provided and it's just simmering, waiting, and it's growing, growing so that it can be prepared to enter into life and be able to handle what life has for it. This is what wisdom does. Wisdom Wisdom sits and it mellows in our minds, in our hearts. And it gives us time to make a conscious decision. To be able to move on some things to where as we can avoid all type of drama that will cause many of us a lifetime of distress and struggle. Watch that. How long, O simple ones, open to evil? Will you love being simple? And the scoffers delight in scoffering, and self-confident fools hate knowledge. See, this is why God did not want Adam to eat off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because there's a knowledge that mankind will create that will be evil. And God did not want us to have that type of knowledge. He want us to have the godly and skillful, the skillful godly knowledge. But as, but as a result of Adam's high treason, now we have this knowledge in the word. And you see what this knowledge, this is why the Bible uh, says that knowledge puffs up. Because it brings about pride. And this is where we have all type of evil, wicked devices toward humankind. And this is why we really have to tap into who Jesus is towards us so that we can really begin to interact with wisdom and get a relationship with wisdom so that we can begin to be protected and be fed and be nourished. And be growing while we're in the incubator. So when the blessings come. Or when the issue come. We're well prepared in our souls. In our hearts. To handle either one. You know the Bible quotes it like this. Here, the Bible says that. In the day of prosperity rejoice. But in the day of adversity consider. God has set the one over against the other so that man shall find nothing before him. See, both of these are things, prosperity and adversity, have been created by God so that neither pride nor begging can come. But now we will begin to have a balance through wisdom to understand, okay, I'm nothing without the Lord. Everything I have is because of the Lord. Even when I'm going through, I know the Lord is there to protect me. The Lord is there to guide me. The Lord is there to provide for me. This is what wisdom is hollering out to us. But many times we reject wisdom. We dishonor wisdom. And as a result, we pay a lifetime paying for it. Watch this here. Verse 23. If you will turn, repent. And give heed to my reproof. Behold, I wisdom will pour out my spirit upon you. I will make my words known to you. He said, if you change the way you think and give heed to my correction, give heed to my chastisement, give heed to my guidance. See, reproof means that he's correcting you. He's, he is correcting us because we're going the right way. And he's trying to tell us, no, son, don't go that way. No, daughter, don't go that way. Take heed what I'm telling you. Yeah, it's rough right now, but don't go that way. 
I told you don't go that way. You don't trust me? Verse 23. Because he said over in verse 23, if we take heed to his chastisement, to his reproof, wisdom, wisdom will make her words known to us. We'll begin to have understanding. Verse uh, 24, because I have called you, called, and you have refused to answer, have stretched out my hand, and no man has heeded it, and you treated as nothing all my counsel, and would accept none of my reproof. This word is in there a lot. I also, wisdom is talking to us now, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when the thing comes that shall cause you terror and panic. What is calamity? Calamity is a disastrous event marked by great loss and watch this here, and lasting distress and suffering. Wisdom said that since you didn't want to take heed to my correction, since you didn't want to take heed to my counseling, When calamity hits you, because it's going to hit you, because you opened the door for calamity. Because you wouldn't take heed. And even though calamity will come, you do not have the foundation, fortitude in you to withstand it because you didn't take heed to my reproof. You didn't take heed to my counseling. Now, what I have to do, I have to sit back and allow life to put some hickeys on your head. Some of them hickeys is going to be swole on your head for a while. Know what I'm talking about. Lived it. I've grown in wisdom. I've grown in wisdom. Because some things will take a lifetime to get off your back. And wisdom, she's saying, if you take heed to my reproof. Come on, preacher. You take heed to my counseling. Uh, I will help you. You will be nourished. See, see, she said reproof and counsel. Because, watch this here. Reproof, which is rebuking, which is chastisement. Rebuking without counseling, without encouragement, watch this, is bashing. So you need to have an even steel on this here thing. You need to reproof. You need to check. You need to chastise. You need to rebuke that thing. You need to correct a person and sometimes a hard correction. And you also need to bring the counseling. It's sort of like ministering to the rebuking that you brought. It is sort of like that bomb in Gilead. That oil that covers the pain that you put on them with the rebuking. Now the bomb covers it up, soothes it, heals it. So now you have wisdom to guide you correctly. Watch this. Then will they call upon me wisdom, but I will not answer. They will seek me early and diligently, but they will not find me. Then you want to go, once life done put a hickey on your head because you done dishonored wisdom, know what I'm talking about. Now you want to go and fall on your knees, oh Lord. And, you, and, and now you're up early in the morning. As soon as that thing hit, now you're early with it. As soon as that hickey hit, now you want to call on the Lord, oh Lord. That's what early means. As soon as that calamity hit, as soon as that issue hit, oh, Lord, help me. And you diligent in seeking it now. You diligent in seeking wisdom. Oh, what can I do? Oh, show me what to do. Oh, Lord, help me. Show me what to do. But, but by this time, life, life is in its rightful law state to continue to do what it's doing. 
So now you got the mellow in that thing. God, dog, Jesus. Boy, I know what I'm talking about. I've been through it. Watch this. Watch this. Um, verse 29. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord, would accept none of my counsel and despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be satiated with their own devices. The Bible quotes it like this here, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. Whether it be of good, yep, there's a flip side to the Cohen power, so you may well tell them, or whether it be of evil. And when we dishonor wisdom, we put ourselves in a situation. We put ourselves in the firing range of life to hit us to where there are some calamities coming. There are some great losses, some great misfortunes, and sometimes the lasting effect of distress and suffering. We've all experienced it. Some worse than others. But now we should begin to say, you know what? I'm sick and tired. Come on. Of being sick and tired, yep. Of being sick and tired of sick and tired. I want my life to change. Wisdom, she said, turn. Huh? She said, if you turn and give heed to my reproof. Because you got that coming. You got the checking coming because you've been ignorant. You got the checking coming because you've been hard headed and stiff neck. You got that boss checking coming if you take heed to my reproof. Behold, our wisdom will pour out my spirit upon you and will make my words known to you. This is when revelation will begin to come to you. Whoa, I didn't see that at first, wisdom. Now I see it. Thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Now I ain't going that way no more. Let me stay right. For the backsliding of the simple shall slay them, and the careless ease of self-confident fools shall destroy them. This is why the wicked are always banging on folks, are always, always got their foot on your neck. This is why you have hard taskmasters. This is why folks are just on you, and they putting heavy burdens on you because you wouldn't listen to wisdom. This is what happened to the children of Israel. They wouldn't listen to wisdom. And as a result, they got in so much trouble and they spent years suffering in slavery and everything. Watch this. But whoso hearkens to me, wisdom, shall dwell securely and in confident trust and shall be quiet without fear or dread of evil. See, wisdom protects. Wisdom is the incubator that we sit in. Wisdom is the incubator, watch them, that we rest in. Wisdom has everything to do with the Sabbath of resting. And we rest in wisdom so that we can begin to learn, to grow in wisdom. See, God wants us to have an awesome life, watch this here, that is distinguished from everybody else. My Lord, Jesus Christ. Because it's in that is where he get the glory. But by us dishonoring wisdom, Satan gets the glory. This is why many of us we remain sick so much. We always got all kind of sickness and disease. This is why we remain broke so much. We always struggling and lacking. Always hoping and praying and begging God. Lord, send somebody to bless me. Lord, send somebody this way. Lord, help me, Lord. I don't know what to do. Oh, Lord. This is why people don't see us and want to change in their own lives because we haven't changed in our lives. 
But Jesus said that we should be the light of, of the world, a light that's set up on a hill. Jesus said we should be the salt that preserves the earth. But he also said that if that salt has lost its savior, its taste, what good is it except men trample over it under their feet? This is why the body of Christ is so dishonored, is so disrespected, is so looked over. Because there's no favor that's being shown to where people can look at the body of Christ and say, for surety they know God. There's no distinction between us and the world. They don't see any favor on our lives. They don't see any boldness on our lives. They don't see any fearlessness on our lives. When everything is going haywire, the body of Christ as a whole, they intermingle right with the world. They were so happy to get Trump out of office the way you had Christians crying and having parties and all this foolishness. And when we don't even have no business even voting, that's a whole nother one now, boy. You Christians are out here trying to recruit folks to vote. Your pastors trying to recruit folks to vote. And it's just showing that you don't really have faith in God. Then you want to put God in this stuff and talk about and you're going to misquote script, uh, scripture and uh, talk about the powers of be ordained by the Lord and all this here old mess here. You're to misrepresent the scriptures because you don't understand what they mean. And now you rally in the body of Christ to go and vote, and all of them rotten and low down, and you got the body of Christ voting for this here mess, showing no trust in God. And you wonder why the body of Christ is under so much scrutiny from everybody. They bagging the government. But you have a God. Come on, talk to him, wisdom, who has a cattle on thousand hills. You have a God whose all the silver and gold is his. You have a God who created this world and set you apart for his very own. But you want to go and pursue and be in full-blown idolatry. And go and vote for these rotten folks who care nothing for your soul. Both of them, all of them are out to misuse you. But by you not seeking wisdom, by you not receiving wisdom, counsel and reproof, by you not repenting, changing the way you think, your life suffers great distresses. And many times, the lasting effects of the uh, panic, of the distress, of the sufferings, of the struggles, are long times. Some of us, for the rest of your life. But God is gracious and merciful. And if you begin to change the way you think and begin to receive God of who he is to you, watch this here. Wisdom will make her words known to you. That's good, preacher. That is good, man. Wisdom will begin to make her words known to you. God loves you. He really does. And I'm going to bring a part two to this here because this really needs to be expressed to you that you're going to have to stop dishonoring wisdom because wisdom longs to help you in your life. Wisdom longs to lead you in the right direction. Wisdom longs to make your life prosperous and healthy in every area. This is salvation, wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. 
But in order to receive that, you're going to have to stop dishonoring wisdom. Wisdom is a godly skill that can prepare your life. I know what I'm talking about. That can prepare your life to a whole nother level that would distinguish you from everybody else, even when it looked like all hell has broke loose. But you're in wisdom. You're in an incubator that is protecting you. Come on, preacher. You done. Yep. That is providing for you. That is preserving you. And is strengthening you. So that you can have the fortitude to be able to handle whatever comes your way and stand firm knowing that my God, I'm done shall supply all oh, yep, at my needs. This is your boy Hood, Pastor Fulham Back Ministries. Don't forget, I want you to go to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Pastor Eric Hood, E-R-Y-K. I need you to subscribe so that I can begin to go on there live. I need 1,000 subscribers. I need you. Won't be able to do it without you. Go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. Pastor Eric Hood, E-R-Y-K. Go to my Facebook ministry page, Full Impact Ministries, and begin to follow my ministry page. This is where all my lives come on there. Hit the follow button. And hit the notification button so you can be notified every time I come on live on Facebook. Because that's why I come, come on live on, on Facebook on my ministry channel, Full Impact Ministries. Then, if you all are having trouble with your credit, if you want to get your credit right so you can get you a, a home, a, a, a car, and you're tired of being at the dealership all day, and all for to just be subjected to embarrassment and shame, and all for to just pull out all your money for uh, down payments and high APRs. And if you're tired of paying these big deposits for to get uh, apartments and all kind of stuff. If you want to come up out of that bondage, get in touch with me at thecreditgoon.com. Thecreditgoon.com. Or you can call me 404-707-1804. That's 404-707-1804. Or you can DM me. Because we have to get our whole together. It's your boy, uh, Pastor Full Impact Ministries. Stop Dishonoring Wisdom, Part 1. And I'm out. Peace.